Ramu Gond, five acres, Cardosa means recommended. Bila, Bilala, three acres, Cardosa. Then one name was called, and there was pin drop silence. So the village headman who was presiding over the meeting shouted, Bolo bhai. So all the male members of Gram Sava, though in a subdued voice, said, Kar do saab. Recommend kar dijiye. So my hunch proved right that they cannot resist the high and mighty of the village. But there was a shrill voice of a woman, Kaise kar do saab, ye to bahari admi hai. Ye, ye to jo land hai mere bagal mein, wo ye village headman dabai huye hai. And this fellow is son-in-law of the village headman. And he lives about 100 kilometers away from here. Another feature I found that as soon as this shrill voice came complaining, every woman in chorus started saying something as a defense for this woman. That if she could be recognized by village headman, she would have the consequences. So everyone in chorus started shouting, And in that manner, forced the village headman to withdraw the claim and confess, yes sir, this is my son-in-law, I had whatever my eligibility is, I had more land being cultivated by me, so I thought okay, why not let me oblige my son-in-law and give him this four hectares of land, but since villagers do not want, I am withdrawing this claim. <coughs> Imagine. Just a slight change could bring in that much of transparency, that much of participation in the democratic process, that much of ethical disposal of all the claims. I cited this example for focusing on both areas, formulation of regulations and laws, and their implementation. General rhetoric is that all the formulation, formulating teams will put the blame at the doorstep of implementing agencies. That we had made a perfect law, but implementing agencies have messed it up. They are not implementing it correctly. Implementing agencies will always say that formulation has been inadequate. It has too many loopholes. What could we do? Now people are fed up of this rhetoric on both sides. And therefore, instead of indulging in this kind of rhetoric, we have to understand that formulation of laws will always remain vulnerable to all kinds of manipulative pressures from all kinds of interests. If you know, the process, you will understand why and if you work for government or parliament, you will understand how this happens. But that is a reality. Another thing about implementation, whatever is prescribed in the law and rules, if you follow it only in letter, then implementation will also be inadequate it will not be comprehensive enough to deliver justice to all the deserving people. And that holds good for corporate world as well. This is the instance which exposes that we have to have a very participative system of enacting laws, enacting systems, formulating regulations, where all stakeholders are duly represented and they are not only silent participants, but active, with active articulation. Only then we can ensure that whatever systems we create are healthy, facilitate the organization to achieve its vision and purpose. 
and also reward and penalize appropriately. And that is what has been my endeavor in Department of Public Enterprises. The first system was CSR and we had five interaction meetings with CMDs of Central Public Sector Enterprises of their CSR heads. In many cases, these were HR heads, as well as civil society organizations who were implementing their CSR projects. With those five interactions, with the feedback available from them, we formulated draft guidelines, put those guidelines in the public domain again, and sought suggestions from general public, whosoever was in, interested in that. And only then these guidelines were put up. And I'm proud to say that our guidelines, when these were put up, were noticed by even Harvard Business School. And Professor Kramer came down to Delhi and discussed these guidelines with our public sector CEOs, our political representatives, World Bank people, and civil society organizations. And it emerged that the way that this concept is evolving globally, whatever has been put in by Department of Public Enterprises shows the right direction. And I believe a second such interaction is scheduled in January in Hyderabad on CSR and sustainability system. So you can use that opportunity to hear about these guidelines and the systems from global academicians, global practitioners from Norway, Sweden, from US, from other countries. That opportunity will be there, I think, 24th or 25th of the dates are, uh, I don't remember. Second thing I would like to highlight here as a challenge that we have had lived long years after every failure doing the post-mortem and saying something to satisfy suffering masses. Like this 2008 crisis, OECD in their post-mortem said that our guidelines are the best, perfect, only the implementation was inadequate in US and that's why they have precipitated this crisis. Other countries where a stakeholder's involvement in management is larger, they said that our systems are best. If they had a stakeholder's involvement, it would not have happened, like Japan and Korea. But the fact remains that whatever you say by way of hindsight, global economies suffered, jobs were lost, and a lot of trouble. Like I was in Europe for three, four days, and watching TV, almost 90% of the time, the news was of procession here, procession there, some violence here, some violence there, Italy, Spain, Portugal, Greece, everywhere. Things were going from bad to worse. People were losing their jobs, people were lo losing livelihoods, and lives were being wasted. And nothing was in sight for them. So if you continue in the same realm, that whatever guidelines, whatever systems you put in place and precipitate these cyclic troughs, you cannot get away with it any longer. And Mr. Gordon Brown, who was Chancellor of Exchequer in UK and even the Prime Minister, he has very recently written an editorial art article in New York Times that 
another financial crisis of graver magnitude is on the horizon and you cannot wish it away because financial imbalances in global economy have grown to such gigantic proportions that nothing much can be done imagine the severity and therefore i am not speaking as a prophet of doom and i don't totally agree with him but he is an authority he is he has been a practitioner he has insights and when he is talking about something he must be having quite a sound basis for it and therefore academicians and management students researchers practitioners captains of industry and business they should put their brains together to see to it that this kind of financial crisis doesn't affect our businesses and specifically our public sector enterprises department of public enterprises brings out a pe survey every year to create a time series data on public enterprise performance and the bad news is that till last year that is 11 12 public sectors turnover was growing healthily at a pace 20% plus year on year in fact 11 12 it grew by 23% exactly their profits were growing at a healthy pace of 10% plus year on year the data for 2012 13 has been compiled and we will be publishing this data and this survey is always put in the parliament also is yet to be compiled but preliminary results before coming here i asked my survey team they gave me it was shocking year on year growth of turnover has come down from 23 to just 5% profit growth just 2% whereas it was growing at 10% plus so the impact on public sector is now visible with a phase lag of about 6 years and if gordon brown proves to be right things may be much worse and therefore we have to think of what to do and while uh, coming here i was asked by professor lakshmi narayan that challenges everyone knows there can be an exhaustive list of challenges but what is to be done what is the solution i fully agree with him only thing is that nobody can prescribe one size fit all solution for this kind of crisis but as department of public enterprises what we are working on professor r k mishra outlined those things that since we know that collective wisdom is always better than individuals singular wisdom and therefore we have been working on revisiting all our systems whether it is mou whether it is corporate governance guidelines whether it is uh, appointment of independent directors even the new companies law and we are working in most participative manner that all public sector representatives they will be involved in reviewing finding out what should be dropped 
what should be brought in, what will facilitate, and what will create obstruction. And even up to the highest level of approval of decision making, we have been ensuring that their participation is maintained. Like target setting and evaluation, we call it MOU exercise. We constituted a working group where public sector, CMDs, director, finance, level of people were there. Whosoever wanted to be represented, they were there. And then recommendations were formulated. These were examined in such kind of open houses. Thrice we did that. And then it went to the decision-making competent authority where also we ensured that all those people who were very articulate, who were very concerned, they are also represented so, so that they can also ensure that while decision making, their point of view is duly articulated, factored in, and the decision influenced by that. Corporate governance, independent director, everything. In companies law, that is Companies Act 2013. We have already circulated to our public sector enterprises and their administrative ministries that these are the provisions under which you had exemption under Companies Act 1956. There is a provision in the new company law, section 462, which entitles for this kind of exemption. Any class of companies can be exempted by Ministry of Corporate Affairs from any provision of the law, rules, etc. And therefore, we had circulated this long back, that is October. But this time, I find that response is not adequate. Only four companies have responded to us, and only two administrative ministries have responded to us. Now, that is rather painful, because my experience says that when systems are being formulated, when legislations are being formulated or enacted, when regulations are being framed, if stakeholders' participation is adequate, articulate, and emphatic, the system created is not only healthy, but quite facilitative and long-lasting. Otherwise, within months, of creating the system, the need to amend arises. And when we have a system of amendment which is so dilatory, like if you have to amend something which is approved by the cabinet, it takes somewhere around one and a half to two years. And if it has to be amended by parliament, it takes even more than that time. And if you miss this opportunity, when it is being formulated, when people are asking you, that please go through it, please tell us what exactly is needed, what exactly should be done. At this time, it can be done without any delay, because 